Hello, welcome to Prajim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 2 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll learn about using Visual Studio, creating our first ASP.NET web application, and finally, we'll learn about the different vendors that appear in Visual Studio. When you first fire up Visual Studio, you will see the start page, and this start page contains latest news related to .NET development and other learning and community resources. To fire up Visual Studio, go to the Start menu, select All Programs, Microsoft Visual Studio 2010, Microsoft Visual Studio 2010. Upon selecting that, you should see Visual Studio 2010 open up. And on the Start page, you should see the latest news related to Visual Studio 2010 besides other learning and community resources. At the bottom of the start page, you can see the first checkbox which states close page after page of the project load, meaning close the start page if I open a project and after that project gets loaded. And the next option that you have is show page on startup. When I start Visual Studio, do you want the start page to be shown or not? That's dictated by this checkbox. Just in case, if I uncheck this, I'm telling Visual Studio not to show the startup page when, when I you know, run Visual Studio. So close that. And when I open Visual Studio, once again, it will not show the start page for me because I have unchecked that checkbox. Now, if I want to view the start page, all you have to do is from the view menu, select start page and that should bring the start page up. So to create our first ASP.NET web application it's as simple as selecting file and then new project. So from the, view, from the file menu select new project which brings up the new project dialog box and from here pick the programming language of your choice. I can build ASP.NET web application using Visual C Sharp or Visual Basic or any .NET supported language. So I choose Visual C Sharp and since we are going to create a web application, I'm going to select Web underneath Visual C Sharp and from the middle section, select ASP.NET Web Application. And where do you want to create that? Specify the location. I want this to be created in the C drive. So I selected C drive there. And then if you look at this, there are two things here. One is the name of the project that you see here. The name of the project that I'm giving is Web Application 1 and the solution name is also Web Application 1. In a bit we'll understand the difference between projects and solutions. And finally click OK. So this should create a Web Application project for us within C Drive. OK. So now we have created the Web Application project. The next thing that we will learn about today is the Solution Explorer. Now, to see all the files that make up your project, you know, you can make use of something called Solution Explorer vendor. Now, within Visual Studio, I cannot see Solution Explorer. To view that, you can go to View menu and select Solution Explorer. And if you look on the right hand side, there is some keyboard shortcut here. You can either select View Solution Explorer or you can use the keyboard shortcut control W and S okay so control W and S should bring up the solution explorer and if you look at the solution explorer you have the solution itself whose name is web application 1 and underneath that solution we have web application 1 project so a solution is a collection of projects which means to this solution I can add another project by simply right clicking on that and selecting add new project which should bring up add new project dialog box now instead of choosing visual C sharp as the programming language let me choose visual basic so I'm going to choose visual basic and let's say I want to create a class library project and I'm going to leave that the name of the project as class library 1 and look at this, this project is going to be created in C colon backslash web application 1. What is this one? This is nothing but the folder of the solution itself. So I want this project to be created as part of this web application 1 solution. So when I click OK, it's going to add a new class library project to this solution. So within the Solution Explorer, if you look at that, the solution name is web application 1, which has got two projects underneath that. 
One is the class library project, which is making use of Visual Basic programming language. And the other one is the web application project, which is using Visual C Sharp programming language. Now, a solution will have a .sln extension. Now, if I right click on the solution, you know, solution itself, and when I select open folder in Windows Explorer, you should see there is a solution with name web application one, which has got .sln extension. And then the solution and these two projects, if you notice the address bar here, they are present in C colon web application one. So in C drive, this web application one is the solution folder. Within that solution folder, we have got two other projects, web application one and class library one. Solution files have the extension of .sln, whereas the project files have the extension of .csproj. If you look at this, the web application one project, which is a web application project, has .csproj. If you remember, when we were creating this web application one project, we have chosen the programming language as C sharp. So the extension of this project is .csproj. C is standing for C sharp project. On the other hand, if you remember, when we were creating class library project, we have chosen VB as the programming language. So since VB is the programming language here, the project extension will be .vbproj, VB standing for Visual Basic. And another thing to notice within the Solution Explorer is that the name of the web application project is bolded, indicating that within the solution, this project is the startup project, meaning when we run you know, this project by clicking this button, start debugging, the first project that starts up is this web application project, which in turn will use this class library project, if at all, if we have referenced that project within this web application project. We will be talking about referencing other projects in a later session. I can also change my startup project simply by right clicking on a project and selecting set as startup project. And look at this, the moment I do that, it removes the boldness from web application one and now class library one is bolded, indicating that this is the startup project within my solution. So to view the Solution Explorer window from the View menu, select Solution Explorer, or you can use the keyboard shortcut, Control W S. On the Solution Explorer, use the Auto Hide Push Pin button to either show or hide Solution Explorer. Now if you look at the Solution Explorer, it's docked here. If you want to auto hide this, you can use this tiny little push pin here. So when I click that, it gets automatically hidden. Okay, so when I hover my mouse over, it appears, and as soon as I move my mouse away, it gets auto hidden. And to toggle that behavior, I can use this tiny little push pin on the Solution Explorer vendor. Visual Studio organizes applications into projects and solutions. The solution file will have a .sln extension, whereas the project file will have a .csproj or a .vbproj, depending on the programming language that we have chosen to create that project. Start a project in Solution Explorer is bolded. To change your startup project, simply right click on the project and select set a start project. And remember, you can only have one project as the start project, startup project within the solution. You cannot have more than one project as startup project. The next window that we'll be looking at today is the toolbox window. So I have this web form, for example, you know, when we created this web application project, obviously there is a web form which is created default.aspx, about.aspx. We will be talking about web forms in a great detail in later video sessions. So if I open this web forms and keep in mind, web forms in .NET has the extension of .aspx. And now let's say on this web form, I want to drag and drop a button or I want to use a button control. Okay, I can flip the web form into design mode by clicking on that design button on the bottom left hand corner. Now let's say I want to use a button control on this web form and to do that I need to drag and drop that button control from the toolbox and at the moment if you see I don't have the toolbox visible here. So obviously if you want the toolbox to be shown you can go to the view menu and select toolbox from there. Look at this. 
I am I want to open the toolbox window now within Visual Studio if you want to open any window that's closed you go to the view menu and select it from there that's one way another way to obviously is to use the keyboard shortcut and look at this most of the windows to open them they have a common prefix I mean control W and then S for solution explorer M for team explorer L for server explorer and probably for toolbox it is X okay so I can either choose you know from the view menu toolbox or I can use the keyboard shortcut so from the toolbox I can simply drag and drop the button control so I drag that drop it here and I'm able to use the button control on my web form so to view the toolbox select toolbox from the view menu or use the keyboard shortcut control W and X and obviously toolbox contains the controls and components that you want to use on your web application project and the other window that we'll talk about today is the properties window obviously the properties window is used to change the properties of a control or a web form in your web application project now let's say if you look at this button control the text it uses is button which doesn't really make sense to the end user so let's say I want to change this to click me or something along those lines and to do that I need to do that from the properties window at the moment properties window is shown here but let's say it's not visible now how do I get to the properties window simply right click the button control and select properties from there or as usual go to the view menu and select properties window from there so properties window or you can use the keyboard shortcut control W and P so that should bring up your properties window in I mean just like any other window within solution uh, within Visual Studio if you want to dock that use that tiny little push pen and once you select the button control the button properties will be shown in that properties window and let's say I want to change the text that is visible here I change the text property to something along I click me finally today we'll be talking about web forms we have already spoken that web forms have the extension of dot ASPX now if you go back to the solution explorer now we didn't create this web form it got automatically added when we created a new web application project okay and if you look at this web form what is this this web form contains the HTML so and if you look at the web form itself there are three modes in which you can you know change or design this web form one is the design mode where you can visually change things for example welcome to ASP.NET training I want that message to be shown on this web form I can visually change it here in the design mode or I can do that in the source mode welcome to ASP.NET training at Prajim and then when I flip to the design mode you can see the design of that page there reflecting that change that we made in the source mode or you also have the split mode which will actually split the page into half and half here I see the source and here I see the design for example welcome to ASP.NET training at Prajim Technologies and the moment I do that and save it look at that it will be reflected in the design and another thing to keep in mind is that a web form has a code behind file and to view the code behind file of the web form let's put this in the source mode now all your web form will contain is the HTML the presentation piece only the HTML in general now the C sharp code okay will be present in the code behind file and to view the code behind file there are several ways one way is to obviously right click on this and select view code which will bring up the code behind file or you can go to the solution explorer you know behind that default.aspx you should see default.aspx.cs which should bring up the code behind file there now another thing to keep in mind is that we have chosen C sharp as the programming language that's why your code behind file has the extension of default.aspx.cs on the other hand if you have chosen Visual Basic as the programming language then the code behind file would have had the extension of default.aspx.vb and another file that you see here is the designer file 
default.aspx.designer.cs. If it was VB, it would have been default.aspx.designer.cs. Now, what is this designer file? Now, the code behind file contains the code that user writes. For example, on the page load, what should happen? You write that code here. This contains the user code. Along the same lines, let's say I have this button control here. When I click this button control, what should happen? I write that code here within the code behind file. But on the other hand, there is some code that's automatically generated by Visual Studio when I drag and drop, for example, this button control. Okay, so there has to be a declaration for this button control. So where is this auto-generated code present? That code is present in this designer file. Now if you look at this button control, if I right-click on that and select properties, if you look at this, the ID of this button is button1. Okay, now where is this button1 declared? Okay, that is declared in the designer file. So if I open this designer file, look at this, button1 is actually a variable of type button class. Okay, so the designer file contains the auto-generated code and the code behind file contains the code that user writes and the ASPX file contains the presentation, present that is the HTML. And look at this, how does Visual Studio know this default.aspx.cs file is the code behind file for this ASPX page. That is with the help of the page directive. Now, if I flip to the source mode of this default.aspx page, you see there this page directive. And this page directive has got an attribute, code behind attribute, which tells, you know, which is the code behind file for this ASPX page. It's default.aspx.cs. So the ASPX and its code behind are associated with each other using this code behind attribute. So web forms has the extension of .aspx. A web form also has a code behind and designer files which are auto-generated. Code behind files has the extension of .aspx.cs or .aspx.vb depending upon the programming language that we have chosen. Along the same lines, the designers have the extension of .aspx.designer.cs or .aspx.designer.vb. Code behind files contains the code that user writes, whereas the designer file contains the auto-generated code. And one thing to keep in mind is that you shouldn't change the code in the designer file because the code might later be modified by Visual Studio and your changes could be overwritten. That's why it's called designer file, which means it contains the designer generated code. And we also we have also seen that a web form is associated with its code behind file using the at page directive using the code behind attribute. And we have also seen that a web form's HTML can be edited either in source or design mode, or you can also choose the split mode, which shows both design and the source at the same time. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.